a little bit taller than I am, so I'll... <laughs> Well, I'm happy to be here with you and to see um, good Democrats. Um, I've been campaign. To go back a little bit, I love campaigning. And I think I'm the only one, I love an election. I think I'm the only one in our family who really, really enjoys it. <laughs> but it's so exciting to me because I get to meet wonderful people and people who just want good government. Of course, I get some of the others sometimes too. <laughs> But, um, and, and by the way, he talked about the one week Habitat for Humanity Work problem, program. We've been doing that, the Jim and Roseman Carter um, Habitat Build, uh, Habitat Work Project, I think it's called. And we've been doing it, this is our 31st year, one week a year, one week every year. And that week is now. This is the week for this year. And I've been in, um, and I've work camp in Fort Worth in Dallas, Texas. And I have um, spent um, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday uh, working. And I left. I've never done that before, but I left because I wanted to come home and campaign for Jason. I'm the one that likes to be out here. And um, I was not comfortable being in Texas when I should have been in Georgia uh, in a campaign when I could have been in Georgia in the campaign, so I left the first time I've ever done that. Well, everybody knows a lot about Jason by now. I don't know how much you know, but he's our oldest grandson, ninth generation of our family to live in Georgia. Um, and if he is elected governor, he will be the first governor with family ties to Southwest Georgia since Jimmy Carter. And, uh, and he cares about Georgia and all of rural Georgia um, which he says the governor has ignored, and I agree with him. Um, South Georgia is losing clout, and Jason is a champion for us in Atlanta. He's worked very hard in the state senate um, for middle class families, um, improving their um, the economy for them, um, and for education is main subject because he's seen the school systems. In fact, well, uh, well, I'll go ahead and say this now, but I don't want to forget the third thing, which is ethics in governor, <laughs> which we need. But um, Jason was in the Senate for a good, he's been there for three years, not, well, for three terms, not part of the first one. He was, um, he was um, named at the end when somebody's term expired, but he's run twice now. He knows the issues. And um, he's, he's, um, and I lost my train of thought. But anyway, uh, before I go any further, I would tell you that um, um, Jason graduated from Duke University. He started working for uh, the Carter Center, came just to be with us for about a year. He got to travel to see some of our programs. We have programs in over 80 countries in the world, the poorest, most isolated countries in the world. And 75% uh, of our work is in healthcare. And um, I remember that Jason went, one, we, we started monitoring elections. We were the only one that did that to try to get democracy going from, um, from dictatorships to democracy. And Jason went, while, while Jason went away, we did it, was at the Carter Center, we did an election in Egypt. He was in Liberia for election. Anyway, when he came home, one day I was sitting on the steps with him, he said, Mom, now I know what I want to do. And I said, uh, well, tell me. He said, I want to be like that woman who acted, who was the, the um, head of the Carter Center program in Egypt. He said, she and the Carter Center staff there work all day, every day to make life, life better for people. And it's true. And he said, oh, and so then he asked Jimmy, he said, what do you think I should do? And Jimmy said, I don't care what you do, but join the Peace Corps first. <laughs> and so he went to the Peace Corps. He was in South Africa for two years. And actually, while he was there, um, uh, we were going to South Africa. We don't have any programs there because the president back then, when we were beginning our work, said, don't bring me any more programs. <laughs> because everybody wants to go to South Africa, and they have so many programs. He said, there's no way I can keep up with all of them. But um, Anyway, 
we told Jason we were coming because Jimmy had to see Nelson Mandela about something. And uh, he said, I want to meet Nelson Mandela. And Jimmy said, everybody wants to meet Nelson Mandela. Why do you want to? And he said, I want to meet a politician who went to jail before he was in office. <laughs> so we took him to see him. And we got to the door and, um, and we said hello and he said hello and Jason answered him back in Zulu. Uh -huh. Well, he was so surprised. And from then on, it was Jason and Nelson Mandela while Jimmy and I sat there. We have no idea. <laughs> it was really interesting. Well, today he's a, an attorney in Atlanta. He came back from the Peace School, went to Georgia Law School, graduated second in his class. And um, now he's in a, a really good law firm in Atlanta. He has two little boys, one of great-grandchildren. One is seven and one is five. And his wife is a public school teacher, a great public school teacher. And I went to hear her. Um, she was introducing me at a fundraising event. And it was the first time I had heard her, and she was so good. She was saying, and I'm in that classroom. He has every day what's wrong with our school. <laughs> because I know I come home and I say, I have too many students in this room, classroom. Anyway, she was she's really good and adorable, too. Um, the issues, that, I told you the issues he's running on. This is an election about the future versus the past. We know what the past has been, right? Georgia going backwards for the last 10 years. After, after we had so many gains in our state. In fact, in 2000, Georgia was on the verge of becoming the kind of state we could all be proud of. Moving into the top 20 states in high school graduation rates, expansion of technical schools to help middle class students meet the job requirements for high paying jobs, health care and mental health services for everyone, even in rural communities. And um, the, the um, Hope Scholarship was cut while Governor Deal has been um, governor. In two years, we lost 90,000 students after, um, from vocational technical colleges, and 45,000 didn't go back. And you know who they are. They're the people on the street. They don't have a job. Um, and I mean, it's just been the, the situation with the dramatic cuts in funding for schools, uh, for education, um, is just um, unacceptable. And J Jason is going to remedy that. I, I want to read you, I brought this because I want to read you some statistics. Today, Georgia is the worst state in the country for unemployment. Even Mississippi is ahead of us. Georgia is one of the top states in lack of health care for pregnant women and in the closure of rural hospitals. Highest, we have the highest maternal mortality, 50th among the states. They're 51 because they can't, uh, D.C., Washington, D.C. So we are 50th in uh, maternal mortality. Um, and I've already talked about how our education system has crumbled. Georgia has 9,000 fewer teachers today and thousands more students. Um, than we did 10 years ago. School days have been cut. Local taxes have been made. Uh, local taxes have had to make up what the state was doing before. Um, and I, one day, Jason toured one, uh, or several, spent several days touring the school system because he had become distressed with what was going on. He came by our house on the way uh, back to Atlanta. He had been in Quitman County than Georgetown, and he said, he came, it was, he was really shaken by what he had found, and he said, um, I talked to a school superintendent today who, all, with tears in his eyes, said, I am graduating a class of students who have been here for 20 years, never had an art course class, and never had a music class, and, you know, that, that, that's just not right, that's just not good. Uh -uh. We have the fourth worst high school graduation in the country. We have 650,000 Georgians who lack health insurance because of the governor's refusal to take federal money because of the Washington-style ideology. We don't want a governor 
who is keeping so many people from getting basic insurance coverage. Our health care since 2001 and 9, the overall health care has fallen from being in 35th place to 45th place while Governor Deal has been there. And this one really surprised me. We are 50th in corruption risk. 50th from a state integrity, integrity investigation. Uh, they they uh, investigated all the states in, in the United States, and we're 50th. I, I, uh, well, I, I, know, I always knew some hanky-panky went on. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know we were that bad. Um, well, I could, I could keep going, but I think I've told you enough about what's going on in our country. Isn't that embarrassing to you? Yes. It's embarrassing yes. to me to be at the bottom of almost everything. And yet, Governor Deal is running ads saying, Georgia is at its pinnacle. <laughs> I mean, well, if this is the best he thinks Georgia can do and be, we need a new governor. Yeah. <laughs> and there are two things we need. We need money. We still need money. We, the, the registration date is passed. We can't register people anymore. But Jason has said, if you're given what? Give, give again. And if you give again, have a fundraiser in your home. <laughs> in fact, I was telling somebody the other day that you can have a fundraiser, invite a few of your friends in and charge them for the refreshments. <laughs> because every penny counts. Every penny counts. And um, the other thing is that the race is a dead heat now. But Jason can win yeah. if yeah. we get out the vote. Yeah. Yeah. No doubt in my mind. Um, but to make it happen, it's going to take every single person working every single day to get every single vote. And we're going to have to work together to do that. This getting out the vote is key. And there are several things that, that, um, that we can think about when we're doing that. Because um, we know in the South how we fought so long to get the vote for everybody. And Jason has represented everybody in his district. When he's governor, he's going to represent everybody in the state of North Georgia, not just a few close friends, but the governor, like the governor has. Um, but if everybody works together to use the power this year at the ballot box, we will have a new day in Georgia. No doubt about it. And, the, and the, another thing is, we have five women, African-American women, running for statewide office. So we have to have the African American vote is so important. And I know you're going out to vote for them and Jason Carter. Yes, yes. And we have Secretary of State, uh, Lieutenant Governor, School Superintendent, Labor Commissioner, and Insurance Commissioner. In the last election, Georgia was just under North Carolina in almost becoming a blue state. Right. If we work together, the Republicans are so afraid that Georgia's gonna become a blue state because Georgia is a leader. We have Atlanta, with it's kind of, the, it's kind of the center of South Georgia. And if Atlanta goes, if, if Georgia goes blue state now, there's no doubt in my mind, and the Republicans know this too, that the South is gonna be going blue very yeah. soon. So, what are we gonna do? Yeah. Elect Jason Carter governor. Thank you very much for being here, and get out everybody you know, and get to the polls. Thank you.